Okay, uh, hello everybody. Uh, good afternoon uh, for all participants and uh, all, all of uh, participants in this uh, Zoom, in this webinar. Today we have a webinar with the digital cross-cultural business communication. And now me, uh, my name is Kiyadi Nukroho. Uh, I will be host for this event, and uh, I want for all of you to make sure that you keep the microphone mute, so uh, your microphone not disturb, not disturb our uh, the speaker presentation, a uh, presentation, and we would like to extend our gratitude to the speaker from uh, Sami State Pedagogical University, Mrs. Olena Smenok, which is a doctor of pedagogical science and professor and head of chair of Ukrainian, Ukrainian language and literature. And then uh, we have another speaker from uh, EMCF Ukraine, uh, which name Mahardia Parsiana, uh, PhD in Economic Science and Associate Professor of International Economic Relations and Reg Regional Study Department. And from our campus, we have Mr. VP R.D. Alfianto, Master of uh, uh, Master of Education, Lecturer of Communication, Visual De Design Department from TECOM Indonesia. And I would like to welcome our esteemed panelists and the audience here today. Your present edge will immerse value to this occasion. Uh, for today's agenda, we will commence with Indonesian National Anthem following by opening speech delivered by Dr. Joseph Santoso and, and the, our extreme rector, rector of Tecom University. But today our le rector have, uh, have some difficulty because he have another meeting. So it will be replaced by uh, International Affair, Ms. Uh, Ms. Novita. And then after, after that, we will uh, we will start to do uh, the webinar in in the in the upcoming minute. Oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, maybe we can start to uh, to play the the internet the the indonesian anthem mr jonathan
we have uh, opening speech. Now we have an opening speech from Miss uh, Novita because we have a difficulty in uh, in uh, for Mr. Joseph to to be able to deliver the opening speech. Okay, uh, please, Miss Novita. Okay, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, as Stephen Quiz scholar and participant from around the world. Good morning and welcome to this international webinar event. I stand before you today with great honor and privilege as a representative of the University instead of our external director. Today we gather here virtually from across the globe, united by a common purpose, cross-cultural business communication, a topic for today. I want to talk all the participants and also the distinguished speaker at the organizing committee for your dedication and enthusiasm in making this event a reality. Your president here demonstrated your commitment to advancing knowledge and addressing our world challenge. Please attentively participant, ask question and in judgment in discussion to maximize this valuable valuable opportunity. As we continue today's discussion, let us remember that exchanging idea and collaborating across border is essential to finding innovative solution to global issue. In closing, I want to reaffirm our commitment to the principle of education, cooperation, and international understanding that bring us together today. Let us honor this principle by actively. Thank you for your attention, and without further delay, let us begin this international webinar on cross-cultural business communication. Communication. I'm confident that our shared pursuit of knowledge know no bones. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Miss Novita. Okay, today we have a, a webinar with team on uh, with team title cross cultural business communication. As we know, we are we all live in the in the cross culture because uh in this globalization network we have many people, we have many countries that around the world that we ha that have uh, different culture in in their business and their communication. So uh, this is a very important uh, knowledge to to be able to understand how how uh, for us to be able to do communication with uh, with uh, with understanding how to to react and how to to talk. How to to adapt with different cultural, cultural or different country and different different style of communication. Okay. Uh, today we have a, a speaker. The the first speaker is Mrs. Olena Sminok. Uh, she is a doctor of pedagogical science and professor also head of chair of Ukrainian language and literature. So uh, I guess uh, this is a very, the speaker is very uh, understand in how to to do uh, business communication because uh, Ms. Olena is, came from pedagogical, from, from uh, educational, uh, pedagogical, pedagogical uh, educational, uh, University. Uh, okay. Uh, I guess I would like for uh, I would like uh, to give time for Mrs. Olena Sminok to do the presentation. Okay, Miss Anastasia, you can start it. And the apologies. Доброго ранку, дорогі ранку, дорогі Наша тема родинні виховні традиції у проєкті лінгвокультурологічного аналізу. 
Okay, so greetings to our colleagues. Good morning from Ukraine. Our topic, as you can see on the slide, is family upbringing traditions in the projection of linguistic and cultural analysis. Сьогодні тема міжкультурна комунікація, тож рідне слово природне, небуденне, без золота і каменю, без хитрої мови, виховує ціннісне бачення світу і задовольняє потреби у спілкуванні, у взаємодії, взаєморозумінні, співпереживанні, самореалізації, самовираженні. Uh, so in this day and age, the communication in the native language uh, fulfills a great variety of a person's needs, for example, in communication, in self-expression, uh, in, uh, in making connections with family, friends, other different sorts of people. And uh, the most important trait of any native language is that it's simplistic, simple, easy and it doesn't need any fancy or exquisite words to prove a point or to convey a certain feeling or a certain message. І найщиріші вітання від нашого Сумського педагогічного університету, прошу далі Анастасія, нашого університету, і ми шануємо високу честь усіх колег, які сьогодні тут зібралися, вашу шляхетність і повагу до слова, до Колег, які виховують почуття гідності і стійкість духу. Наша область має кордон у 560 кілометрів. І попри страшну війну і численні тривоги, наш колектив з честю витримує іспит війною, тому що ми підтримуємо міжкультурну комунікацію. We're sending greetings from the uh, entire staff of some State Pedagogical University, and we have the great honor today to be a part of the team that has respect for words and philology, for dignity and fortitude. And we want to say that our region has uh, a border of more than 500 kilometers, and that's why, unfortunately, we hear numerous air raid alarms every day. But our team is honorably passing the test of the war because we are united uh, around our common values, such as native language uh, and our love for written and spoken word. Because we believe that our people are not independent on the side of the national power. І перед вами, колеги, на слайдах наш університет, наші дописи в соціальних мережах, і там прості слова про маму, про батька, про друга, про сина, про брата, про сестру, про взаємну комунікацію. По слово, що ліки допомагає тоді, коли сказане від душі. Uh, so we, say, we think that we became independent not by the means of arms, but by means of our national spirit. And uh, on the slide here, you can see our university and the posts on social media that the staff of our university makes. And as you can see, the words used in the post are actually pretty simple. We often mention our parents, our families, our native country, uh, and words such as like happiness, love, kindness, and others, because to us, they are the most important. Так, бо дійсно, і перегортаємо на наступний слайд, мова і молитва, вважаємо, що це спільні, спільнокореневі слова, тож ну, наша мета, колеги, сьогодні говорити про міжкультурну комунікацію через прості слова, назви спорідненості, батько, мати, мама, брат, сестра, наша рідня. So because in Ukrainian, uh, the Ukrainian words for uh, to speak and to pray actually have a common root, we think that the most simple words are also the most important in the language. And that's why we would like to talk to you in very simple words about very simple words, such as uh, the names of different stages of kinship. For example, uh, the words to denote our parents, our children, our grandparents and other members of the family. А ілюструвати наші слайди усі будуть картини з подвійним смислом, двовзори Олега Шупляка. І пригортаємо на наступний слайд. Yes. And the illustration, the illustrative material to the presentation is provided by Ukrainian artist Oleg Shuplak. Uh, he's making those uh, paintings that have double meanings and they depict uh, familial ties and kinship ties 
uh, in uh, these uh, in these beautiful images of nature and landscapes. В українській мові, як і в багатьох інших мовах і в ваших мовах, колеги, є дуже рідне близьке серцю слово рід, родина, що означає сім'я, велика сім'я, а ще може вживатися на то значення слова краса, урожай у чеській мові, в польській мові теж краса. Тож хай на вашому роду буде написано тільки краса вашого роду. So I think a lot of languages have uh, uh, words that denote a certain degree of kinship and words that denote family. Uh, but in our languages, in the Slavic languages, these words also function to betray the concepts of beauty, like in Polish, or the concept of harvest, like in Czech. And we wish for all your families to also be prosperous, to be beautiful, and to be happy. У нашій культурі надзвичайно велика пошана до батька. Тертаємо наступний слайд. Бо це слово батька для нас закон. Кажуть, не навчив батько, то не навчить і татко, інший. Без батька пів сирота, а без матері вся сирота. Хоч батько й скупий на слово, але воно є законом. В українській культурі дуже шанується слово «батька» і в міжкультурній комунікації йому надається пріоритетна роль. So in Ukrainian culture and in the Ukrainian language, the father is a very honored figure. We have a lot of idioms and phrases, expressions uh, about our fathers. Uh, for instance, we say that our fathers are usually stingy with the words. But their words, despite of that, are always a law in the family. Uh, and of course, because fathers are so honored in our culture, uh, a concept of a father is also very important in cross-cultural and intercultural communication with Ukrainian people. Приортаємо наступний слайд. В словниках української мови в етимологічних ми знаходимо дуже цікаві пояснення, бо слово батько може означати чоловік по відношенню до дітей, а ще батьком називають основоположником певного вчення, а ще ввічливо називають і звертаються до людини похилого віку. Батько називають брата часто, в чеській мові – це брат матері, в болгарській мові – старший брат. So the dictionaries and the glossaries, they give a lot of definitions for uh, the word a father. For instance, a father is defined as a man regarding his children or figuratively a founder of some teaching, spiritual or scientific, doesn't matter. Uh, or else it's also a polite address to any elderly person. And in different lang in other languages, you can also use this word to refer to uh, older brothers or uncles or different uh, male relatives. Перевертаємо на наступний слайд. Тому, коли говорять побажання здоров'я, завжди згадують батька. Кажуть, будь здоровий, рости великий від черевика до чоловіка, до батька і будь здоровим. І слово батько вживається в багатьох значеннях, коли приплюсувати суфікси, і буде означати батьківщина, моя родина, мой мій дім і у великому значенні Батьківщина – це моя держава. So because the father is a very important figure in our culture, when we wish somebody well, we always also wish well to their fathers and then their, their entire family. Uh, and there are a lot of derivatives that come from the word father. Uh, for instance, uh, we have a pair of very similar sound derivatives, Batkivshina and Batkivshina. So Batkivshina is a family uh, united by a father, Batko, and Batkivshina is uh, a motherland, or as we say in Ukrainian, a fatherland. So the land where your father and his father and his father in turn used to live and grow. Перевертаємо на наступний слайд. І батька глибоко шанують у родині, в родині кожній, бо його слово мудре. Він буває веселий, 
сивочолий, говіркий, мудрий, добрий, єдиний, задушевний, бо його поради надзвичайно важливі в міжкультурній комунікації. І образ батька прекрасно представлений у легендах, у піснях, у думах. І часто батька порівнюють із сивим голубом, а голуб – це птах, який несе мир усім людям. Батька часто асоціюють із ремеслом, і батька, і народного майстра завжди вважали справжніми родинними педагогами, бо вони визначали професійну долю сина і доньки. So the image of a father is well respected in different types and kinds of folklore, such as legend, legends, songs, tumas, and so on and so forth. And to them, uh, the fathers are described uh, with a lot of positive adjectives. As you can see on the slide, they can be described as kind or uh, a little bit bossy and also cheerful and knowledgeable, heartfelt and concerned about their kids. Uh, and in culture, the fathers are usually associated with doves. So the birds that bring peace and happiness to the entire country, to the entire place where they live. And they're also associated with crafts um, because fathers, just as folk craftsmen, were considered actual real family teachers because they determined the professional fate of their sons and daughters. Образ матері у кожній культурі відіграє, перегортаю на наступний слайд, величезну роль. Бо мати – це наша молитва, і материне слово оберігає всіх дітей. Тому в міжкультурній комунікації усі побажання матері відіграють надзвичайно велику роль. In Ukrainian culture, a mother is associated with prayer, kindness, grace, and mercy. And that's why it's also important to remember how valuable a concept of a mother is in cross-cultural and intercultural communication with Ukrainians. І на наступному слайді ми показуємо дуже багато прекрасних епітетів, які характеризують матерів усієї планети, усіх країн. Бо вони турбуються і моляться за те, щоб ми були з вами здорові, незламні, люблячі, розумні, мудрі. Тому після нашої лекції візьміть і зателефонуйте своїй мамі, напишіть їй прекрасні слова, що ви її любите. So, and as you can see on the slide, the mothers, uh, the mothers are also described with a great variety of kind and beautiful words such as kind, gentle, loving, compassionate, optimistic, humane, good-natured, and so many, so many others. And we'd actually, uh, we actually would love to, for every one of you to call or to text your parents, your mothers after the lecture, after the webinar, and to remind them that you love them and appreciate everything they're doing for you every day. Колеги, і на слайді у нас там пиріжки. Мама пече в нас в Україні пиріжки. Завжди, коли ви в дорогу збираєтесь чи на роботу, то хай запах цих пиріжків приносить вам удачу. Yes, and on the slide, uh, on the picture, you see a plate or a bowl filled with little pies, and those pies are usually baked by mothers for their children. Uh, and we take these pies with us when we go to work or when we travel somewhere, and they are uh, a manifestation, a material manifestation of our mother's love. Um, and that's why I would also love to ask you to share some of this love and maybe to share this particular story with your mothers, with your parents, um, to uh, always keep in mind that families do always love each other. Колеги, і кілька слів ми скажемо про дітей, але подивіться ж, які образи матері. So before we move on to the topic of the children, in a Ukrainian family, please take a look at these uh, depictions of the image of a mother in Ukrainian. So they are always very different, uh, but also very beautiful. І кілька слів міжкультурній комунікації скажемо про те, що потрібно навчати дітей комунікувати. Комунікувати толерантно, чисто, красиво, 
Бо діти і критичне мислення на сьогодні надзвичайно важливі поняття. Uh, and because very important in intercultural and cross-cultural communication is uh, to teach the children to communicate tolerantly and to think critically, uh, because in this day and age, uh, it's really important to uh, teach children to uh, encounter and to behave with people of different cultures and backgrounds. В українській культурі, як і в кожній культурі, завжди називають сина, доньку так, що пов'язано з роботою. Бо робота і дитина, критичне мислення і осмислення пізнання світу – це єдині поняття в Україні. В Україні часто доньку називають, пов'язують із доєна груддю, молоком харчується – Молоко матері приносить радість і спонуку до роботи. So in Ukrainian language we often use uh, words to denote our sons and daughters, so our children. Uh, we often use words that are connected with different types of work or activities, because uh, activity um, is a way that Ukrainian people perceive the world through. Uh, and for instance, the Ukrainian word for, word for daughter, Dochka, uh, is origin has originated from a Ukrainian verb that means to milk. Uh, so basically the daughter drinks her mother's milk and in bring it brings her happiness, health, prosperity, uh, and it makes her grow into a beautiful young woman later. У традиції кожного народу шанується міжкультурна комунікація, які навчають брата і сестри завжди поважати одне одного. Цінувати, перегортаємо наступний слайд, думку одне одного. Тому сестра в українській культурі означає утішниця, а брат означає друг. Той, що допомагає, той, що підказує, підставляє своє плече. So the Ukrainian culture is bringing the children up in respect for both their parents and the, their siblings. And that's why in Ukrainian culture, uh, a sister is uh, someone who comforts you, someone who provides moral support. And a brother is someone who always helps you uh, and someone who's always happy to lend either a listening ear or a shoulder to support you or to cry on to. Тому і державу часто називають братньою, дружньою, товариською. Брат – це той, хто пізнає світ, той, що зазирає в криницю знання. Бо будь-яка міжкультурна комунікація потребує знання, досвіду, щоб комунікувати в глобалізованому світі. Yes, that's why we also describe our state, our country, and all our social communities as brotherly, uh, because we're all brothers and sisters to each other here in Ukraine. And it's also important for cross-cultural communication because uh, it's a really important, it brings a really important concept of unity into play. І перегортаємо аж до батька, до діда і баби, і скажемо, що в нашій родині дуже тісно цінується і поважається культ діда, і культ баби. Бо коли ми говоримо про міжкультурну комунікацію, ми повинні пам'ятати молитви наших дідів, наших бабусь, які привчають працювати, шанувати традиції, не насміхатися одного народу і з іншим, а співпрацювати, товаришувати. Саме так народжується новий якісний продукт роботи. So, and the concept of uh, an elderly person is also very honored and respected in Ukrainian culture. Uh, for instance, our grandparents are the ones who teach us how to work, how to be respectful to each other and to people from different countries, nations and cultures. And the most important thing is they teach us all cooperation, which is a very important concept in the globalized age we live in and, of course, for cross-cultural communication. Тож на закінчення нашої розмови, колеги, ми згадаємо мудрість діда і баби, тому що вони становлять 
ключові ідеї міжкультурної комунікації. І пригортаємо наступні слайди, там де від побажання. То хай тобі дитина прибавить в ручки, в ніжки і в животик трішки. Бувайте здорові у кожній родині, у кожній родині Всесвіту, у кожній країні ростіть великі, від черевика до чоловіка. Шануйте і дай Боже вам хлібом і сіллю, і дай Боже здоров'я, просимо вас. So, and as you can see, in those uh, phrases of wishing well that were passed on to us from our parents and grandparents, uh, they always are concerned with um, everyone being healthy, everyone being sated, everyone being happy together with their parents, grandparents, their entire families. Uh, and that's also, all of that is also what we wish for every one of you today in attendance. И переростаємо на наступний слайд. І якщо раптом ми сьогодні не відповіли вам на всі запитання, то толерантній країні обов'язково скажуть, вибачте на сім слові, прошу, простіть, простіть, шануючи хліб і честь вашу, Бог з вами. На тім світі віддасте пиріжками, але в кожній країні знають, що якщо навіть хто до мене з каменем, а ми до нього з хлібом сіллю, шануємо, поважаємо, цінуємо одне одного, бо комунікація і держава, і рід, родина, рідня – це все спільнокореневі слова. Дякуємо. So, and if we haven't managed to actually cover all the points uh, during our today's presentation, and if you haven't managed to completely satisfy your interest in the topic, we're asking for your forgiveness, as you can see on the slide, in a lot of different ways. Uh, and we'd love to attract your attention to the last phrase, uh, because it's really important these days for our Ukrainian people, because even to those who come to us with stones and weapons, uh, we still are kind to them, we're still hospitable to them. We come to them with bread and salt and treat them as people, as equals. And that's also what we, what we are always willing to do to everyone in attendance here and to everyone in general. Because uh, we think that a family, kindness and respect are basis of any type of communication, especially cross-cultural. Тож, знову повторимо, що рідне слово наше, природне, водночас небуденне, виховує оцю міжкультурну комунікацію. І якщо це можливо, показати відео. So, to conclude, we'd love to remind you, to conclude, we'd love to remind you that a native word uh, develops a valuable and unique understanding of the world. It satisfies our need for communication, interaction, mutual understanding and empathy, self-realization and self-expression. And uh, to end our speech, we'd love to show you a little video with uh, paintings showcasing different images that are important to Ukrainian culture and that might also be important for everyone communicating with Ukrainians. Не показує, так? Настю, нічого тоді не будемо показувати далі. Настю, воно не показує, можна зупинитись, подякувати. Синки варимат. Не чуємо. Не чуємо. Sorry, sorry. Yes, so we're very grateful for your attention and for allowing us to be a part of this event. So thank you once again. Okay. Okay, uh, thank you for a great presentation, Ms. Olina. Uh, we have uh, some questions here. 
Uh, you can read it on the Zoom chat, on the Meet chat. Uh, this is a question from Miss Novika. Uh, in this rapid evolving landscape of global business, where cultural and nuance play a pivotal role, how can organization effectively balance the delicate between preserving their core value and adapting to diverse cultural expectations? Can you tell a real-world example where company navigate this intricate balance exceptionally well, leading to unprecedented present then success and what lesson can be drawn from such a case for future career cross business and the fall. So I will translate the question to Miss Elena and then translate the reply. Uh, so, пані Елено, питання полягає в тому, що в нас зараз велику роль відіграють у бізнесі культурні нюанси і необхідно знайти баланс між збереженням наших цінностей а, і а, адаптацією, пристосуванням одне до одного. І вас питають, чи знаєте ви якісь приклади, коли компанія або, можливо, навчальний заклад а, зміг досягти цього балансу і отримати якийсь надзвичайний успіх? І які уроки для себе з цього ми можемо винести? Настасію, ми виконували сім грантів, грантів з медіаграмотності, які, ну, наприклад, хакатон, всеукраїнський турнір, батьки, батьки, учні, студенти, викладачі і науковці. Ми створювали мультимедійний словник з медіаграмотності, в який завели цілу низку лексем, які, які прийшли разом з війною і з психологічними переживаннями. Чого ми досягли, створивши цей словник, має 250 лексем. Чого ми досягли, створивши цей словник? Ми були дружніми. Нас, нас поєднала спільна праця. Ми зберегли здоров'я, життєвий баланс, психологічний. А друге, ми до цієї роботи долучили фахівців Польщі, які прочитали нам психологічні Курси розвантаження. Ми вийшли на широкий загал. Ми побачили, що ми не самі. Це раз, що нас підтримують. А друге, ми побачили, що батьки, діти, студенти, учні, викладачі єдині у виконанні завдань, різнорівневих завдань. Дякую. В цьому наша перевага і в цьому ми бачимо користь. Uh, so we can't actually, uh, we don't have actually any really relevant experience about uh, commercial companies, but speaking about uh, higher education, uh, we can say that um, over the last years we participated in a lot of different grant programs regarding, for example, media literacy, and one of them was a national tournament uh, that ended up in building a team of uh, people from all countries and all social circles, and we worked together on making a glossary of uh, <clears throat> new words and lexemes that appeared in our language because of uh, our new reality, because of us living in a war zone. Um, and uh, we were all united through work and it established a sense of brotherhood, a sense of familiarity between all the participants. Um, and I think uh, the lessons that we could draw from uh, this uh, endeavor, from this action, uh, were first of all that we were all valued, we were all heard in this modern world, and that we have to always be willing to listen, to hear uh, what the other people are saying, and to actually actively, attentively listen to them. Okay. Okay, thank you for the uh, great answer. And there's another question from Ms. Tia Rami and Ms. Suharso. This is uh, almost the same question. How to pass the border and understand what the other people with different tribe and language in one country in order to communication easily to understood and to avoid mi misunderstanding during communication between two different countries. 
with different culture. Okay, this is the question. I guess this is uh we can uh connect uh, two question into one question because this is about how we understand other people with different tribe, different language between different country and how to avoid misunderstanding between communication. Okay, that's the question. Пані Олено, питання до нас полягає в тому, що як уникнути непорозумінь при міжкультурній комунікації, особливо якщо використовуються дуже різні мови? Відповім так, Настю, що в нас наразі підписана угода із Бельгією, місто Гент, і Австрією, Відень, із дослідницькими центрами, які якраз наразі і вивчають це питання. То... Ми, ми долучаємо до такої роботи різних фахівців, літераторів, мовників, знанням іншої мови, психологів, терапевтів і виконуємо різні проєкти. Ми вважаємо, що уникнути непорозуміння між державами можна тоді, коли ми виконуємо спільні цікаві проєкти, які приносять результати покращення успішності, покращення взаємодії у сім'ях. Тобто ми в Австрії показуємо свою культуру, а вони показують нам свою культуру. Долучаємося. І ще раз, зрозуміли, Настю? Yes, so we actually, our university is actually uh, in active cooperation with research centers in countries such as Belgium and Austria, and we work on a lot of projects regarding exactly this topic. So thank you for that question, because it's really interesting to us. And uh, our, our strategy is to involve as many specialists as possible. It means not only people who can uh, translate or interpret for us to avoid factual misunderstandings, misunderstandings, but also people who are knowledgeable enough in a topic that's being discussed, for instance, psychology or maybe linguistics or anything else. Uh, and we think a way to avoid any sort of misunderstandings is to be united by a common goal and a common project that's interesting to anyone. And it's also important to be willing to show your culture, to educate people about your culture and to talk about it without any, without passing any judgment on other nations, cultures, ideas, languages, and so on and so forth. I add, Nastya, that in Belgium, in the city of Gent, there is a weekly school that shows the traditions of different nations. A weekly school, a Sunday, де вивчають у суботу традиції різних народів. А у Відні, в Австрії, працює центр, такий міжкультурний центр, який дає можливість пізнати культуру України, Австрії і інших народів. І, відповідно, це допомагає нам співжити. Yes, and we'd also like to add that Belgium, uh, in Belgium they have a Sunday school type of project where students go to learn a lot more about different cultures of different countries uh, and particularly of course ukraine and in austria we have a cross-cultural center where we have different ev events uh, that make austrian people familiar with ukrainian culture and that familiarize us in turn with their culture and peculiarities of their language and society okay uh thank you for uh the the answer and this is my question this is uh, just a uh, simple i just want to know about ukraine uh as as i know the your university at sami sumi and is it sumi have a different language between sumi and maybe with lviv or kiev is it they have a different culture or different tribe or is still a same, same came from a same tribe. And what about the language? Yeah. Uh Питання до нас в тому, що, наприклад, культура Сумщини, взагалі Північної, Східної України, і культура Західної України, культура і мова, вони все-таки однакові чи вони різняться? Надзвичайно цікаве питання, і нам надзвичайно приємно, що нам ставлять питання, які в кожній культурі, 
кожній країні є літературна мова і є діалекти. І ці мови кожної країни прекрасні. Вони доповнюють одна до одної. Тобто, ясно, як і в кожному регіоні, Настю, будуть різнитися традиції, але вони взаємодоповнюють. Взаємодоповнюють одна. Чим більше я знаю мов і культур, тим більше я людина. So we thank you for the question because we're very happy when people are interested in our culture, country, language, etc. And we'd love to say that although the standards are the same for all regions of Ukraine, so the standard of a culture or of a language, uh, but of course every region, every part of Ukraine has its own uh, dialects, its own language varieties, its own traditions, but they're all built on the same base, on the base of love, respect, and of course, uh, a, a really big amount of happiness and willingness to be kind and be helpful to our neighbors. And uh, another question. Uh, yes. Do you have a different language for the elderly? Because in our culture, we have a different type of language for elderly and for uh, for uh, our friend with elderly is we have a different type of language. Do you have one? Каня, чи різниця у нас мова і мовлення при спілкуванні з, наприклад, людьми старшого віку і з однолітками? Це теж надзвичайно цікаве питання. І ми глибоко шануємо мову наших бабусь і дідусів. Що відрізняє наразі цю мову? Мова дітей сильно нашарована іншомовними елементами, такими, які мало відомі дідусям і бабусям. Зато мова бабусь і дідусів, вона є мовою мудрості. Наведемо, вона заснована, Настю, на традиціях, на досвіді. І тому прислухаються до мови батьків, до мови дідів. Ну, який ж мені приклад? Ну, наприклад, діти скажуть «Окей», а батьки скажуть «Добре, молодчина, зробимо». Діти скажуть «Привіт», а бабуся, дідусь скажуть «Доброго здоров'я тобі, дитинка». А накажи тебе хлібом та сіллю. Навіть коли вони хочуть полаяти, вони скажуть добре слово, накажи тебе хлібом та сіллю, щоб ти беріг здоров'я. Тобто мова дідів і бабусь звернена на добро. І тому треба прислухатися. І ми дуже вдячні за це питання, щоб зберігався досвід поколінь. В усіх країнах світу треба дуже оберігати мову, наших старшого покоління. І є така наука – герагогіка. Герагогіка. От дуже б цікаво було вивчати андрагогіку, лінгво-андрагогіку, мову людей, мову старшого покоління. Прошу. Yes. Uh, so, as you may have heard from the presentation, the concept of respect in general is really important in Ukrainian culture, and we share this respect both for our language and for our elders. And of course, the language in which we communicate to older people and the language in which they communicate to us uh, differs a lot from the language younger people use. <clears throat> for instance, it has less foreign borrowings, so more traditional Ukrainian words. It's more oriented towards tradition. It's more oriented towards kindness. It might be more eloquent, have more fancy words, so to say. And it's also heavily oriented towards wisdom, towards the experience uh, those people have and relaying this experience to the younger generation. And that's why we think it's really important to preserve this type of language and to not let it just disappear and be replaced by this dispersonal uh, foreign this personal set of foreign language borrowings okay uh, uh that's very interesting answer because we also have a different language sorry my webcam is broken we have also have a different language for uh, our elderly we also keep our art art language but for the young generation we start to decline the use of the art style 
language i guess uh, maybe is a still is the same in the ukraine i guess is it the same <laughs> okay yes <laughs> okay. Hmm. okay uh okay for a participant is there anyone want to ask for mr uh, olena mungkin untuk partisipan ada yang mau tanya Rambamannya kesulitan bisa saya coba terjemahkan. Oke. Okay. Oke, okay, kalau nggak ada ya. Oke, okay, kita menuju ke pembicara selanjutnya. Oke, okay, uh, now we uh, thank you for Miss uh, Olena for a very great presentation. Uh, now we are go to the second speaker, Mr. Wipi. Uh, Argianto from uh, Stockholm University. Uh, and the time is here, Mr. Wibi. Okay, thank you, Mr. Adi Nugroho, for this moment for me. I'm so uh, grateful for even today because we we can learn about communication across the culture and this is very important for us if we want to make a business grow yeah and i want to share about my material uh, i hope uh, you can learn uh, from my ppt and from my material can uh, you can uh, learn about cross-cultural communication. Next. Next, Jonathan. Thank you. No. First, we need to know. We need to understand about culture. Group which shape a person. Values. yeah, Values and identity. We talk about values. yeah, Values person and identity. Culture is format about race, ethnicity, gender, uh, class, and religion, country of origin, geographic, uh, geographic region. A good understanding of uh, the culture of a region, region or country is very important for achieving the goals of a business organization. In simple term, cross-cultural business communication is communication used in the business world, both verbal and non-verbal communication. Taking account cultural factor in area, region, or country. The meaning of cross-culture in this case is not merely foreign, international culture, but also culture that uh, grows and develops in various regions within a country, and you know indonesia as a country that is very rich with the various cultures is a various valuable example for business people implementing cross-culture business communication as is known every region in indonesia has culture characteristics that other region do not have such as how someone communicate with other people how somewhat respect other people how they use their time, how they work, how they believe or believe something that has been passed down from their assessor, how they dress and how they treat certain products. If business people want to expand their business to other regions or other countries, understanding the culture of their, that region or country become very important including how to understand seasonal product in a country it is intended to prevent fatal errors that could result in business failure for example a business person want to market a new product to another country during the snow season what products should be marketed during this season so, a good understanding of how the people of a country act and behave in their daily life in certain seasons is very necessary 
especially for business people in general, people in country that has winter will prepare various necessities for life, for live in according with very cold weather with temperatures below zero degrees. When winter arrives, they need various kinds of products that suit the season, for example, jacket, sweaters, heating equipment, snowshoes, snow clothes, and the like. Because the products are really needed by the public, it is natural that their price during the winter are relatively expensive. On the other hand, the price outside the snow season tends to be cheap because it is sold at a discount or sale. Next. The importance of cross-culture business communication. It, it is time for decision makers, especially top management to anticipate the era of uh, free free trade and globalization from an early age. This era is marked by the increasing expansion of various products and services, including communication technology, causing the exchange of information from country to another become more flexible. So that I seems as if the world is no longer bound by partition and that limit countries theory without having to observe carefully ordinary people also know that Indonesia has long entered the era of globalization a simple example is the entry of product and service from abroad that can be consumed by consumers in the country such as fast food soft drink children toys communication equipment uh, his expertise is pointing to the era of free trade and globalization companies got it business globally in general companies operating in the country whether in the fields of manufacturing exploration or use several foreign consultant to help them to help them develop like this there are large companies in indonesia that are expanding their business to various countries second by looking at current development or trend cross-cultural business communication has become very important for the harmonization of their business however a mutual understanding is needed between two or more people in carrying or cross-cultural communication, either through breathing or verbally. The increasing number of cooperation patterns and economic agreement in various parts of the world today will make cross-cultural business communication internally. Next. Six fundamental patterns of cultural difference. So, different communication style, different attitude toward conflicts, different approach in completing tasks, different decision making style, different attitude toward disclosure, and different approach to knowing. Important. Currently, there are several patterns in economic oppression in various regions. That works as the as the ASEAN, uh, the North America, and the Canada region, the Central European region, uh, the European region, and the Latin America region. Next, communication. So uh, this is about we we communication uh uh many languages uh in many region in the world so draws on speech pattern language and nonverbal and interactive 
verbal communication is very important in interpersonal communication for several reasons, one of which is that words can connect people to each other deeply. Interpersonal relationships are built in everyday conversation. In the communication process carried out by so research see uh that verbal communication can be the first factor in getting started in interaction. Research will also look at what kind of verbal communication there is carry out and its uh different rates. Nonverbal communication. Nonverbal language can be expressed express through several channels, such as which will be said below. First, facial expression. A, a, a person's facial expression can provide information to other people about a person's mood and emotion. Uh, there are several forms of emotion basic, such as happiness, sadness, anger, fear, and surprise that can be seen in facial, exp facial expression. And this is universal. And second, I look. I guess can provide information about whether someone want to communicate with other people. Intermediate eye contact someone with the other people can help explain what is the relationship between the two. A couple can start the for quite a long time without having to say words. Body movement or gesture. The body movement help to be able to understand what is what spoken by someone. Even body movement can substitute words that are not spoken by someone. Very body movement helps capturing the meaning behind the words. Thoughts. Thoughts can provide different meaning according to the setting cultural background. Common form of thoughts ex expression will come when someone first meet the shaking hand. The firmness of a handshake can provide information. Certain things about a person's personality, someone who is steady and holding the other person's hand for a long time has an open nature compared to people with a weak handshake. To people with touching each other more the longer they know each other and become close and intimate. So, thoughts can be revealing how close a person is another person. Interpersonality step is a form of nonverbal communication related to the use of space when someone communicates with other people. Someone was speaker at a distance, distance close to the person you are talking to show closeness among them. The closeness of the distance between two people is medium communication alone or verbal communication to occur, other like touch. Next. What it's uh, interactive? What it is interactive? The meaning of uh, interactive mutual action, interrelationship, mutual interactive in the world of computer. The term interactive relate to dialogue between computer and terminal or between computer and computer. In general, interactive means that there is two-way action and there is a reciprocal relationship between one another. In many cases, interaction is needed so that relationship can occur and achieve certain goals. Mutual activity between the two or more parties is needed for a a reciprocal relationship to occur between the two. Next. So this is about cross culture, ex, custom, value, gender, country, and ethnic city. Next. Important uh, to companies to to the growth of global business technology and the internet understanding of how people from uh, different cultures speak, communicate, and perceive the world around them.
uh, language difference, high context uh, versus low context culture, nonverbal, and power distance are major factor affect cross cultural communication. Next. Uh, why is it important? Business opportunity, job opportunities, globalization, sharing of views and ideas, talent improvisation, understanding of diverse market. Interactive communication has an important role in the business world and unit differences its, uh, its company. This communication can be useful a person's ability in the company to overcome and deal with different cultures. This is what makes cross-cultural communication very important. Intercultural communication has an important role in the business world and unique differences in its company. This communication can be useful as a person's ability in the company overcome and deal with different cultures. This is what makes cross culture communication very important. We all have a several barriers in cross cultural communication, ranging from language, culture, perspective, nonverbal, and others. By studying cross cultural understanding, we can eliminate several barriers in cross cultural communication. When this obstacle disappears, it will be easier for you to build trust and improve your business and career. Next. High versus low context cultures. High context culture cultures that really heavily on nonverbal and subtle situational cues in communication. Uh, etc. Now, America, Western Europe, and low context culture, cultures that rarely heavily and words to convey meaning in communication. Example, Middle East. Uh, cultures tend to differ in the extent to which context influence the meaning individuals devise from communication. In a large culture context, people rarely heavily and nonverbal cues and subtle situational cues and communicating with others. A person, official status, position in society and this reputation that carries quite a lot of weight. What is not said may be uh, more significant than what I said. It is low cultural context. The they essential rarely unspoken and written words to convey meaning from Body language and title are less important. Next. So this is a type of uh, Japanese, Arab, Latin, America, Italian, British, French, North America, German, Swiss. This is about how low cultural and high cultural. Cultural guidelines. First, know yourself, understanding your own cultural identity and pieces is as important as understanding the unique viewpoint of other people. Helping the development of mutual respect, justice and democracy clearly establish an environment of justice or mutual care. This will become your third culture for effective intercultural communication that transcend uh, its person cultural norms. Next, verbal communication, use of sound and words to express yourself, include face uh, face face communication, telephone communication, or radio, TV. Communication is the process of exchanging information between individual or group with the meaning of purpose to be conveyed. The message of uh, or information conveyed can be in the form of verbal communication or nonverbal communication. Communication children must be familiar with what verbal and nonverbal communication is. In general, verbal communication is communication in the form of spoken or written. For example, the use of words, 
mean well on verbal communication. It's communication that does not use words, for example, using body language such as facial expression and hand hand movement and even voice international and speaking speed. Verbal communication in the form of words spoken directly, talking, can be done directly face to face or through media, for example, interacting using social media or a cell phone. Meanwhile, verbal communication through greeting can can be done using media such as a letter, postcard, chatting on social media, and so on. Uh, uh, Non-verbal communication. Next. Next. Non-verbal communication occurs more often in direct or face-to-face -face communication. The reason is in communication using digital media, non-verbal communication is often impossible. For example, when we are chatting, it is impossible for us to see the facial expression of of the person are talking to or hear the intonation the or their voice because of this limitation nonverbal communication often causes misuse and misunderstanding yeah uh, for example sometimes people use emojis uh, in chat people use emojis uh, in a proletary uh, someone mistaken send an angry emoji when actually they want to send a smiling emoji which is next to it. This can cause uh, the person who send the message to mis misunderstand and become angry. Verbal and non-verbal communication are essential. Interlap and complement each other in direct communication. We are constantly sending messages to the person we are talking. Nonverbal communication often occurs automatically and without our control. For example, when we 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 are angry or happy, we tend to speak louder and faster. This happens because we experience emotional change. Nonverbal communication also complement our verbal communication. When we say something. If our body movement do, don't don't support it, people certainly won't believe it. For example, if we say we have done our homework but in doubtful tone, yeah, our friend will definitely not believe it. Study the cultural context. Study in the cultural context. Next. Okay. Study. Uh cultural context of each person, you will find more uh, similarities or different in your or frame reference that your expert however. Be careful not to categorize them based on social cultural origin. When in doubt, listen. If you voice your opinion too early, you will tend to offend others. You also want to listen first to better understand the other person in cultural language, in cultural language and familiarity with the other culture. Eye contact. Some culture. Uh, looking people in the eyes is honest and strictly forwarded in other it is in a challenging role. Next. In US, if you have a good eye contact with a person, it generally generally signifies that you are interested in the person. In Middle East, Eye contact is much less common and considered less appro appropriate. In many Asian, African, and Latin American cultures, extend eye contact can be taken as an affront or challenge of authority. In Western Europe, it is considered proper and polite to maintain an unmost content eye contact with other people. Next, guess sir. Gesture is the term of language. Gesture is the movement of a person's body parts. Body gesture can also be interpreted as a way for people to communicate non-verbally. Basically, humans have been communicating non-verbally since they were babies. When you can do anything, gesture are a way of communicating that you can do. As adults, 
the meaning of bodhicitta is even more complex. Nowadays, company Harade often see the body movement of job application during interview. Bodhicitta seen from hand and body movement. This this makes movement and considered as substitute communication for verbal communication. Body gesture also include facial expression. Gesture allows someone to communicate or express what they feel and think. If someone cannot express what they feel, they, then they will express it through body gestures. In communication science, gesture is a form of nonverbal communication that is not spoken. This includes how, when someone moves their hand, head, or other body parts that can express certain messages. Here are some more examples, language and their meaning that you need to know in the business world. Next. Now, nah, this is gesture. Yeah. In a, another country, about this gesture, it's every uh, uh, different meaning. I keep the passion, Italy, what do you mean? Chris, that's just perfect. Next. Touch, Islam and Hinduism. Touching with left hand, it's insulting. Okay, next. Colors. Now, we, we talk about colors in, in different, different region. Colors is many, many things. Many meaning uh, in Indonesia, colors is it's too much meaning because we have we have much about uh, about ethnic ras. Yeah, color a single color can have many different meaning in different cultures. It's in Asia, orange is a positive, spiritually enlightened, and life affirming color. In US, it is a color of road hazard, traffic delays, and fast food restaurant. Green is considered the traditional color of Islam. It is also the national color of Egypt. Next. Green is, is a symbol of Ireland. Green is a strong trend in the Irish holiday, Patrick's Day. White is traditional color of bridal dresses in Western cultures. China, blue color, gifts are associated with death. Next. So we talk about clothing. Traditional clothing is an important part of a region history and identity. Men tend not to wear such jacket and ties in Colombia and the Middle East. The traditional dress for an Indian woman is a sari. Gulf countries woman has have to wear parda and compulsory for every woman who visits Saudi. Western countries the woman can wear the the what they want. Next. And this is uh, clothing from Kenya, Maasai, bed work. Next. Ah, this is a different greeting in different countries. Po, it's uh, the customer greeting in Japan. Westerners always start with a handshake. Most Latinos are more accustomed to physical contact. Even people who know each other only cyclically may, may embrace when greeting. People from France, Spain, Italy, and Portugal create friends by kissing and put cheeks. Indians usually call it their hands for greeting others. Next. Next. Okay. Cultural conflicts in workplace. So um in cultural about this 
next it arises because of the difference in value and norm of behavior from different cultures so this situation create misunderstanding and lead to conflict next different situation misunderstanding or conflict between different nationalities religious or ethnic groups cultural uh, ignorance and insensitivity lack of awareness of social lifestyle practices miscommunication and mis interpretation perception of illness and treatment next blocks to cultural communication uh, ethnocentrism inability to accept another culture or view example my way is the best way discrimination treatment to an individual due to minority static actual perceived Example, we just aren't equipped to serve people like that. Stereotyping, generalizing about a person. She's like that because she is Asian. Next. Cultural blinds, difference or ignore and no process to different it did not exist. There is no need to worry about a person culture. Cultural imposition. Believe, believe that everyone should come from the majority. Uh, example, we know what's best for you. If you don't like it, you can go elsewhere. Tone difference. Formal tone at times become embracing and off putting in some culture. Next. Improving cross-cultural communication, overcome ethnicism, recognize cultural variation, learn about cultures, remove language barrier, help others, adapt to our culture, breathe and speak clearly, improve communication skill, listen carefully, respect style preference. Next. Tips for effective cross-cultural communication. First, you need to slow down. Avoid negative question, separate question, take turns, read it down, be supportive, check meaning, avoid slang. Next, maintaining equity, what's the humor? Okay, the last, the reasonable man adapt himself to the world, the reasonable one person in trying to adapt world to himself. Therefore, all progress depends on the unreasonable man okay thank you this is uh, the end for my ppt i beg give back to mr satyo adi Ugroho. <laughs> okay thank you for a very good presentation and we have a lot of information about cross-cultural about how people react in the different location, different country, and that give us a lot of information. And maybe uh, you can share your presentation in this uh, room chat, maybe because maybe somebody needs it. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Again, okay, now we have uh, two question. Uh, first, uh, you can read it on the room on the meeting chat. Okay. How can organization optimize their cross-cultural business communication strategies to navigate the challenge and opportunity present by globalized market marketplace, ensuring effective collaboration and success on international scale? Okay. Um, to ensure effective collaboration and success on an international scale consider the following k approach uh, firstly invest in comprehensive cultural training secondly encourage language proficiency thirdly leverage technology to its fullest potential by implementing these measures Organizations can optimize their cross-cultural business communication strategies, confidently navigating the challenge and 
facing the opportunities presented by today's interconnect and dynamic international landscape. Thank you. Okay, uh, thanks for the answer. And then the second question. In the context of cross-cultural business or communication, how can organization foster a culture of inclusivity, adaptability, and effective collaboration to thrive in the diverse landscape of the global marketplace? Okay, and cooperation to thrive in the diverse landscape of the okay the global marketplace yeah okay to foster uh to foster inclusivity it is crucial uh, for organization to to prioritize cultural awareness and sensitivity adapt adaptability is the the cornerstone of success in the ever and and evolving global marketplace encouraging language proficiency among employers enable effective communication across linguistic barriers. Moreover, leveraging cutting-edge communication technology facilitates real-time collaboration, allowing terms to simply navigate uh, geographical distance. So, uh, in conclusion, by prioritizing inclusivity, adaptability, and effective collaboration organization can not only navigate but truly thrive in the diverse and dynamic landscape of the global marketplace thank you okay uh, now we have a question for me from mr amin tohari from east java uh, he has a question about what's a fun initial step that manager can take to eradicate harassment in their organization. Okay. Entretic harassment in an organization requires proactive and comprehensive approach from manager. Here are some initial steps that get take. Okay. So I think uh, if we want to clear about this uh, violation, first confirmation, uh, the boss, uh, the leader, or the HRD confirmation that all workers, job applicants, and third parties connected with the company have the right to be treated with dignity and without distinction. Second, a complete explanation of the action that constitutes sexual harassment. Third, a statement that sexual harassment is not justified or cannot be condoned in a company with zero tolerances provision. Ensure that all people who are victims of sexual harassment in the workplace have the right to submit complaint and take appropriate action in accordance with company regulation. Explanation of procedures and mechanism for workers who are victims of sexual harassment, leader and worker tasked with handling complaint. Explanation of procedure and mechanism for workers who are victims of sexual harassment, leader. Uh, confirmation, a uh, company policy and can be subject to disciplinary action in accordance with the, with the company agreement. For, uh, furthermore, preventing sexual harassment in the workplace can be done by
by first communication. This is done by providing information about sexual harassment through seminar, social media, virus print, and electronic media. And second, education. This is done through orientation and introduction program for new staff, religious lectures, or certain activities of programming. Third, training. Provide spe special training at supervisory and managerial levels and trainer to recognize harassment problem and prevent them. Training for the sexual harassment response team. And courage company to build a company to implementing the program of sexual harassment in the work environment, including providing sanction and other disciplinary measure with policies. Thank you. Okay, uh, for okay, just a uh, very uh, good answer from Mr. Wibi. Uh, maybe Mr. Amin have another question. Uh, maybe another participant uh, have uh, another question. If you have question, please write it in the room chat, in the in the chat, or raise your hand. Is there any other question for Mr. Wibi? Okay. <laughs> I guess there's no question anymore. Okay, I guess this is the end of our webinar because the third speaker uh have some other uh have uh, some other problem to be able to uh, to join this webinar. So we have only two speaker today. Uh, so this is the we reach the end of this webinar. Uh, before we closing closing uh, the webinar, uh, please uh, turn on the camera so we can make a uh, photo session for documentation. Okay, please turn on the camera for documentation. Mr. Jonathan. Mr. Jonathan, can you hear me? Uh, Mr. Jonathan, can you take picture of us? Okay, for our participant, please open your camera. I will take a picture on the cone of three. One, two, three. Okay, another one. One, two, three. Yeah, back to Mr. Andy. Okay. Okay, uh, I guess we uh, conclude this Remagabar International Webinar. Uh, before we are officially close, uh, I would like to extend our deepest gratitude to all discrete news speaker, our diligent organization team, of course, all of you, enthusiast participants, your active engagement through full question and diverse perspective have enriched this webinar. The day webinar uh, exemplifying the power of global collaboration and technology incredibility potential to connect individuals across border and culture. Thank you once again for being in the part of this international webinar. Uh, webinar. We eagerly look forward to welcome you to future event where we can continue our journey to learning, collaboration, and positive impact in our interconnected world. And we meet again, take care, stay inspi inspired, and keep exploring the vast realm of knowledge. Very well, have a wonderful day or, if, or evening, wherever you may be. Okay, I guess this is the end. Okay. Bye-bye, everyone. Goodbye.